All right. Um, today I'm gonna try to uh, um, <clears throat> today I'm gonna try to uh, elaborate a bit in a discussion I had about uh, translation. I think. <clears throat> so let's see how far it goes. I'm super tired. So, but um. <clears throat> Uh, I often get questions from people um, what is I often get this question from people what is X in Y language what is you know X in Y language oh gosh <clears throat> and um, you know like everything else that the people is how much time do you have to listen to the answer? If you have uh, 10 seconds, I'll tell you. It depends. Uh, do you care? Um, and they're like, oh no, I just wanna say it and get, get over it. I'm like, oh, okay, sure. Let me give you the closest folk translation to that. But if you ask me, you know, is that an accurate translation or, you know, or if I go to someone else for a second opinion, they give me a different one. And you know, how come there's different, different uh, translations? I'll say, you ask for a 10 second answer. So I give you the 10 second answer. So, um, and uh, yeah, the issue of translation, uh, it irks me a lot. Um, I deal with it a lot in my work. Uh, it drives me crazy. Um, uh, the, especially the status quo of the translation, it drives me crazy. Uh, between the programmers, the developers, the policymakers, and the translators themselves, and the structure. So um, let's try to dig into this a bit. Um, so today I got asked, uh, so as I said, every once in a while I get asked, asked, how do you say X and Y? And sometimes that X is very simple, like how do you say Apple in, 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 in Korean? You say Saba. Okay, fine, you know, there, there, there's no question. But sometimes that X, is something very context dependent or super complex. So today I got asked, um, how do you say uh, line directa in Korean? And line directa, <laughs> uh, I wasn't very social when I was in Chile, so I didn't get to hear line directa a whole lot. And um, so I did a little impression of what line directa is. Um, uh, so what I said to this is, well, you know, if you want to translate line directa, I think if you want a good context of word translation, you should you shouldn't approach it as an abstract math problem. Like, oh, I I want to know what's the formula for uh, an equation of second degree. Oh, that is minus b. Is it minus b? Minus b plus minus the square root of uh, b square minus two ac, etc., etc. All right. So we should not approach as a math problem, but rather uh, as a I don't know what, what you should approach it with. But uh, the more context specific, the more situation specific, the source language is, and the more context is provided, the more uh, accurate and on point uh, translation will be. So there's a direct relationship. So how to express that? So there's a term X that you want to translate to the Y language. And um, the less details you provide, The less details you provide is the less accurate. Oh my gosh. Should have rehearsed this before, huh? Something like this. <laughs> Something like this. So um <clears throat> you provide little details and you're like, you know, I want a generic expression that I can apply universally everywhere. You get something for sure, and it'll work 60% of the time. 60% of the time. 
the remaining 40% it will be awkward or completely off because language is very volatile especially for complex uh, structures now um, if you provide a very specific situation and they're like well you know this thing is gonna be part of a pamphlet that pamphlet is gonna be stuck on a subway wall and it's gonna be directed to the subway passengers and we're trying to educate them about this issue and this is what's going on the issue and we think that they're not aware about this so we're trying to tell them look you need to know about this to the subway passengers and we made it, that poster in English and we wanted to translate to Spanish or to Korean or whatever that's very specific <clears throat> that's very specific so um, uh, you'll get something that's you know very relevant but can you use it to the other um, scenarios well that depends well if if, if if you talk to someone who is, has done a million translations and they're like, oh, you know, I've translated pretty much everything, just ask me and it will come out of my mouth, my wise mouth. And they can tell you, oh, yeah, you know, just use this term and get used, it'll be used in 70% of the situation in the scenarios. But in, in most, for most translators or, or uh, linguists, um, you'll ask them, blah, 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 and okay, this is here. And can I use it in other situations? They'll be like, well, you know, I don't know. Um, I haven't thought about that. So let's run five more scenarios and see whether it's relevant for those. And then maybe through that process, dedu that deductive, deductive process or inductive process, uh, maybe we'll find a term that is 60%. We'll reach that term that is 60% accurate. Um, and we'll stick with that. Or maybe we won't. But um, unless you go through the process, uh, you know, you're not going to get a good result. So, um, uh, so I think what needs to happen is um, when you want to translate a term that is highly complex or very culturally specific, I think what you need to do is um, first step. Oh gosh. First step should be uh, apply the term, the term, in the social context in which or the cultural context in which it's being used. So I talked earlier about the subway and the subway passengers and the poster. That's a cultural context. Uh, it can be uh, line directa. So in the case of indirecta, it's a, it's a term that is highly contingent upon the social interaction of the participants in that, uh, in that exchange, uh, linguistic exchange. So um, that social interaction and the social setting of who is in a position of power, who are the people who are like kind of afraid of doing la directa with that person, and what that delicate topic is that they can't talk directly is about um, so people you know the word cultural or whatever gets overused they say so when I say when we say cultural um, we refer I, I think uh, to be concrete what I mean is a set of things that people do uh, that people do um, that either they just do or carry a meaning that's culture. So um, <clears throat> there, for every expression, linguistic expression, there is a context to it. There's a general context in which it's used in general society. There's a very specific context with very specific players who are involved in that. Who said that? Who's listening? Like who is that person talking to? And you know, what's the background story? So um, that uh, first, this is this is the first step. So apply to specific social situation. Now, the question is, this is a very creative and fun process, is um, does this, a, a, does this, wait a second, why is the video capture device? Right, does this um, 
cultural setup or combination be transferred to another cultural context. So let's say this is in Temuco. The only city I know in Chile. I'm gonna draw a little Chile flag. Oy, ¿qué hago si se me olvidó? A ver, eh, creo que abajo está rojo. Azul. Right? No. <laughs> no, 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 no. Um, el azul está aquí. Y esta es la bandera aquí. Bandera. Azul. Con la estrella blanca. Y... ¡Tadán! Okay, so uh, Temuco, Chile. So there's a specific context in which this is happening, and let's say we are transferring it over to college student. So college campus, the beer bottles. The soju, people laying the grass, right? In Korea. Tokto, Tokto, Indonesia Tang, Indonesia Tang. So in Korea, you know, a college, uh, cult, you know, college setting, the college students. So these are cult cultural contexts in, uh, let's say, in Seoul. So um, this is the cultural context. Does this, does this, you know, does this transfer over to this cultural context? And it's a very creative process because um, it pretty much is what you make, wh whatever you claim is the equivalent, is the cultural or the social equivalent of that uh, experience. Sometimes the cultural experience will be clear enough that you'll be like, oh, look, you know, every indication points at the fact that this cultural experience there's a b cultural experience in korea among the college students and like you know every element is pretty much the same the terms we being used is crystal clear sometimes it'll be a kind of fussy it'll be like ah yeah uh, the social players are the same the you know the sense of negativity the negative context is not so much there because there's not so much, so much stigma with being indirect or with being direct or whatever. Um, who knows? It depends on the social context. So once you transfer that over this experience, then uh, the third thing is now that you are in this experience, when you look at the specific social circumstance in which the expression, the expression would have been used in the original, oh God, uh, in the original, <clears throat> in the original experience, like right here, um, what would be the term, what would be the word uttered? What, what is the expression being uttered in that specific uh, uh, experience? You know, what, what is expression being uttered? Uh, now there might be an expression. There might be a gesture. People like, or people like, I, I don't know. <laughs> it depends. Um, uh, or you might find that in 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 the original uh, in the original context in Temuco, there's social situations A, B, and C, in which case you always use the same term. But in the other cu cultural context, this A and B and C, for whatever reason, I differentiate it. And different terms apply for different situations. Um, so yeah, this is the work of the translator. So, um, and at the end of this very convoluted process, I mean, all, most people do this innately. Uh, and depending on how much they care about the translation, 
they will put their brains will put more time or less time and uh, depending on how less time you put into this work the more shitty your transition may be but um, uh, everyone puts some amount of time thinking about this either consciously or unconsciously and uh, what, what else was I saying? Um, I got so excited I said that you're shitty when you don't spend time talking about this um, I, I forgot what, um, so uh, transfers over yeah so you might find different terms so um, when you ask someone you know how do you say X in Y language X term in Y language uh, you are asking a translator, and without giving any parameter, you're asking a translator. You know, do your do your best um, uh, default value. Uh, um, <clears throat> parameter setting. At least I just give me the answer, and um, depending on how important it is what you want to use, it might be enough. Um, if you just want to say it once and then forget about it. It might be enough. It might be not be enough if you're working on a government document that explains people how to become a how to acquire the nationality of that country, or if you're telling people who are not fluent in the language to how to vote. Then you know if you do a poor job, it's it's not gonna be good, and a lot of people are gonna be confused. So um, that I hope will be the topic of another another day. Uh, how much screw up <laughs> has there been uh, around the world? Um, so yeah, so um, yeah, this is uh, how I think uh, everyone does it, and um, uh, to a certain extent. And um, <clears throat> now, um, When I start pe telling people, oh, blah, 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 you know, there are all this process and, you know, it depends, they'll go, what do people do? Well, they'll go to someone else. So I tell them, you know, um, blah, 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 you know, it's complicated. And then what will the other person do? Well, what's happening? What will the other person do? They'll go to someone else who will be a quote unquote translator or interpreter and they'll say, oh, Easy. The answer is Z. This is the answer. And um, then they'll come back to me and ask me, well, what about C? That's the answer. I'm like, it depends. <laughs> Do you give your translator enough context to understand what you're talking about? They're like, oh, the context is actually blah, blah, blah. I'll be like, see, you didn't get them the enough context. And the other translator misinterpreted the context. They took a guess and got it wrong and you got a wrong translation. Or sometimes you get lucky and you get the right translation. But um, yeah, so there's this going on and this also led me to think is of, you know, at what point does it end? So like, um, I don't know if there ever can ever be 100%. I mean, in today's world, uh, much of the daily culture has been standardized so uh, because of the big uh, big corporations the concept of Apple unfortunately or I don't know has been standardized you draw this and everyone knows it's an Apple but um, maybe 500 years the worst have the end, maybe do we have the worst have 500 years ago, I don't know, in Korea or in other countries. So before that thing was introduced, the term wasn't even there. Um, and in Korean especially, you can see this a lot because um, every item that did not exist in Korea uh, before the encounter with, uh, with the rest of the world, except China, so non-Chinese rest of the world, um, you'll see that the terms being used for them mostly are directly rooted in that language, uh, either Latin, Portuguese, or English. English being like 60%. So um, I wonder, you know, what, what does it mean to translate, given, given this? Like, um, do we just establish the social 
uh, a socially agreed standard of like, yeah, if it's like 8% accurate, that's what we mean by translation. Um, <clears throat> so that's an, a way to think about it. And then the question that arises is, you know, wh what is 80%? What is this thing? How do you measure it? And who decides is 80%? Um, uh, I mean, most people will go by the guard listing, and because uh, a lot of the translation needs, especially if people are, have no knowledge in the language, will be based on simple words that are very easy, and uh, there's no controversy on what the translation is. People expect that thing to happen in the world of complex, highly nuanced uh, terms. And I would say, no, that's not the case. You're trying to apply the laws of, uh, <laughs> um, you're trying to apply, apply laws of classic physics in, uh, you know, in galaxy or very large, like a speed of light level uh, dimensions. And, you know, they, they, they no longer apply. <clears throat> or may maybe we should have gone the micro level. But anyway, so it's a different field. Um, and uh, yeah, that reminded me of this fun video I saw today. Let's go to the fun video. <laughs> uh, CJP Gray uh, uh, entered, uh, blew our minds with this, uh, with this, you know, there's a second you inside your brain. Who is that guy? And why can he not talk? Um, to this point, and now has the ability to think about like, itself through we, time and space, beings, but really only exists in this exact to, very moment. And, and that keep existing in a moment. And it's it's always a, a fancy concept. And I think we can apply this line of questioning to meanings. What is a meaning? <laughs> what is a meaning? And what does it mean to translate? Uh, um, what are the boundaries of a meaning um, given 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 this so too tired to continue but um, I'll be happy to uh, um, be angry in the future about poor translation and horrible translation that uh, uh, made it on billboards or official government documents or and other stuff um, so, yeah, we'll, we'll talk.